Hi everyone, and welcome again to my audiovisual channel. My name is Gabriella Handel, and I'm a draftsman, and today I am talking to you about the seventh of Dennis Sutton's cluster criteria for art. I'm going to read the corresponding excerpt, and then I will muse about it a little bit. If you'd like to support my audiovisual channel, you can do so by liking and sharing this video, and also by subscribing. These are all immediate and at no additional cost to you. If you'd like to support what I do with money, it's also very welcome and appreciated. You can do so by purchasing my drawings directly from my website, which is gabriellahandle.com, just one word, first name, last name. You can purchase crafts I make from eBay, you can buy prints of my drawings, or you can leave me a tip. So thank you very much for your time and attention. Uh, the links for all of those things that I just said will be in the description and the caption. And all right, let's get to the cluster criteria. Okay. So I think I got the number seven right this time. I remembered the previous video, I said it, we were halfway through, meaning that was number six. So let's look for the next one, which is special focus. But let's review Let's review the criteria first, just for kicks. Number one is direct pleasure. Number two, skill and virtuosity. Number three, style. Number four, novelty and creativity. Creativity. Number five, criticism. Number six, representation. Number seven, special focus. Number eight, expressive individuality. Number nine, emotional saturation. Number 10, intellectual challenge number 11 art traditions and institutions and number 12 imaginative experience so let's look at special focus number seven okay quote special focus works of art and artistic performances tend to be bracketed off from ordinary life made a separate and dramatic focus of experience in every known culture, art involves what the art theorist Ellen Desanayake calls, in quotes, making special. A gold curtained stage, a plinth in a museum, spotlights, ornate picture frames, illuminated showcases, book jackets, and topography, ceremonial aspects of public concerts and plays, an audience's expensive clothes, the performer's black tie, the presence of the czar in his royal box, even the high price of tickets. These and countless other factors can contribute to a sense that the work of art or artistic event is an object of singular attention to be appreciated as something out of the mundane stream of experience and activity. Framing and presentation, however, are not the only factors that include a sense of specialness. It is in the nature of art itself to demand particular attention. Although some products with artistic value, for instance, wallpaper or mood-inducing music, can be used as background, all cultures know and appreciate special, quote, foregrounded, unquote, art. Special, um, in parenthesis, special focus and a sense of occasion are also found in religious rites, the pomp of royal ceremonies, political speeches and rallies, advertising and sporting events. Any isolable, isolable? episode that can be said to possess a recognizable, quote, theatrical, unquote, element shares something in common, in common however, with almost all art. This would apply to, ch to such disparate experiences as presidential inaugurations, World Series games, or roller coaster rides. End parenthesis and end quote. Alright, I have mixed feelings about this last line before the parenthesis that says, quote, although some products with artistic value, wallpaper or mood-inducing music can be used as background, all cultures know and appreciate special, 
in quotes, foregrounded art, end quote. Uh, because I feel like it's in contrast with what this criteria is, which is, or what I understand by it anyway, I understand from this description of um, special focus that not only is your attention directed to, not, I mean, not only is your attention focused and dedicated to the object of art, so is your time, you know, because if it's a concert or a play or going to a museum, you are specifically wedging, you know, you're opening up your time to dedicate to looking at that work. So like, not only is your attention being focused on the work, but then you have specifically made time to spend with the work. So to pay attention with the work, to look at it, you know, to be with it physically, your body, you know, you're using your body to look at it and then you're also like physically with the work there. Um, so I feel like this foregrounded art part doesn't, I mean, it doesn't make very much sense to me because of that reason, because it, you know, if it's... You know, if, if we're talking, if, if it's background music, then you're basically ignoring it, and... It's, I mean, I guess... I don't know, it's like, even if it's making you calm and stuff, you're like, still ignoring it, and you're not strictly paying attention to it. Uh, so I don't think it's consonant with the subject of the special focus part, but whatever. Um... The overlap with the other, with the things in the parenthesis, does make sense. Religious rites, royal ceremony, political speeches, sporting events. Because those are also things for, for which you're specifically, deliberately focusing your, your visual attention, your brain attention. And you're, you're making time specifically to watch, listen, participate. Um, All right, enough complaining about that. What I see as a discrepancy, I guess. Um, so then, okay. So then, the other side of the, of the special focus, because I, I was kind of just I was kind of just talking about what would be, I suppose, the viewer of the work. Um, but then it seems like. Part of that is also the way the artist presents the work, presentation, and I definitely got crap for this in uh, the New York Academy for not being, uh, like, deliberate enough about the presentation of my work, because I used to be very sloppy um, in the sense that it was really very careless presentation. I was, because I kind of thought the drawing made the work in a way. Um, and I would use, I would use like shitty paper and I wouldn't frame it, I would never frame it or didn't mount it on anything so that it would be nice and sturdy and like strong feeling, um, that kind of stuff. I mean, I would always be using reused, recycled paper. If, if I could, if I found it, I would try to use it. Um, and just try to reuse things and not kind of consider how that could influence the viewer upon you know when they when they when a viewer looks at the work. So part of special focus is the way that the artist itself uh, himself presents their work. And well, I guess I'm specifically referring to artists, you know, visual artists like this stuff that I do. Uh, but that obviously involves other stuff, music, and what does it say, uh, sculpture, yes, also visual arts, plays, um, so yeah, if you have, if you have your drawing, making the nice, making the drawing super nice and considered and thoughtful, and, you know, with deliberate looking, a deliberate looking drawing is not enough, it's like it should be on nice paper, on a deliberately chosen nice paper. Um, if you're gonna frame it, the frame should probably also be deliberately picked for the drawing with, you know, thinking, oh, does it, does the drawing look good in this? 
um, is is the frame overpowering the drawing? Is it swallowing up the drawing that you kind of you're distracted by the frame that you don't see the drawing? That kind of stuff. And also uh, because he mentions what does he mention? He mentions paying for tickets, you know, expensive tickets to an event. Uh, the presence of the Tsar in his royal box. I mean, and I kind of feel like dressing up for something also kind of counts. So for example, in the case of uh, visual art, if you're an artist and you have a show, you, you wanna dress up nice. And whatever that means to you, that's what you wanna do. So. Also, may, you know, may, maybe not even strictly the use of nice because uh, maybe whatever. The thing is that a deliberate outfit. So something that conveys, you know, wear something that conveys that the event is important to you and to your work because you are part of the presentation of the work that you want to present to the viewer. So then you know, that'll signal to the viewer that your work is important because you got all spiffy to show your drawing. So I think something like that is, or at least that's what makes sense to me. And when I've been to openings where I, I had drawings, I definitely got spiffed up, you know, similarly to the way that I dress up for the podcast, something like that. Oh, so I guess in that case, um, what I'm doing by getting spiffed up for the podcast, even though I hadn't thought about it, but I'm thinking about it now, I guess, um, is indeed indicating that there is some kind of required, you know, trying to call specific deliberate attention to the importance of the podcast, maybe, because, I mean, it's important to me for sure, and I want to look good for it. You know, and I was just thinking, I hadn't even thought that much about it. I was just thinking that, wow, this is really fun. I don't often dress up otherwise because I, I don't really go out that much, really. Um, but then I get to do it, you know, I get to put outfits together and put makeups together and this type of stuff and play with makeup. But um, then it makes a lot of sense that what I'm trying to convey is that it's... Um, it's important to me, so then... But it, it'll, it means that it's potentially important to the viewer or listener. Something like that. I like that idea a lot. Um, and, it, you know, it, for example, it's like... It also makes me think of Jordan Peterson, who's like always in some kind of suit. You know, he's always well-dressed and looking elegant and stuff when he uh, does his podcasts and stuff. Even if he's wearing jeans, he's like still wearing a blazer and he just looks wear... Uh, he just looks well put together, he looks clean and all of this stuff, so then it still kind of brings uh, elegance and cleanliness or orderliness to his podcast episode, and it's kind of respectful to his guest as well. And <clears throat> in that case, perhaps also respectful to his viewers. And, you know, I don't think that necessarily kind of uh, looks down on other podcasts or anything, because... For example, uh, Joe Rogan is just wearing a t-shirt, usually, or whatever, and I think, you know, if, if I'm thinking about what the outfits that he choose for that he chooses for his podcast could mean is that it's really just casual. And that's what his podcast is, it's casual. Uh, and it gets deep very often and everything, but it's really just a conversation between two individuals that want to talk about stuff, and that's it, and that's cool, you know? Um, <clears throat> And well, for my podcast, for a conversation about art, I definitely, I always tell, like, when I invite somebody to be on the podcast, I'm like, you know, if they're worried or something, I'm like, no, it's very casual casual and conversational. You don't, it's not a lecture, it's not a speech or anything. We're just talking and I'm asking you stuff and that's it. Um, so it's still, so like for me, it's still, it's like I still want the... Kind of like the vibe of the con of the of the each episode to still be casual and conversational, but then I still want the presentation, you know, 
I want the presentation of the thing to be nice and easy on the eyes and entertaining on the eyes, you know, and something like that, I suppose. Um, so, you know, it reminds me of lots of things. Well, not necessarily lots of things. It reminds me a little bit also, tangentially, of things that Camille Paglia has said about women's, the way women dress, when women dress skimpily and stuff. And um, I used to hate Camille Paglia's stuff because I hadn't listened to, I just listened to some like three minutes of some interview. It was like cut deliberately that way, right? That's what they do when they want to make, they want to make somebody look bad. But because we are pattern recognizing, pattern searching machines and pattern recognizing, pattern storing machines, all kinds of patterns, visual, behavioral, whatever, all the patterns you can think of, then of course we're sending a message with the way that we present ourselves. So Camille Paglia's arguments, of course, are consonant with the fact that you're trying to say something with how you present something, you know, your artwork or yourself. So that's definitely consonant with that, and I, I, like, I like that. Uh, because it gives a lot of control to the the maker of the presentation, you know. Um, I've read some of Ellen DeSanayakis' work. I don't quite get it, and I don't quite care for it at the same time. Um, unfortunately, Dutton doesn't go very much into what she means by making special. Um, he just uses her term, putting it in quotes, because that's kind of what she says. And making special is when you, you know, indeed take something and you decorate it and you make it, you know, polish it and arrange it so, uh, place it uh, however you think it's gonna look best, like in that corner of the room, uh, next to what other thing with what color uh, palette or this type of stuff. Um, so, you know, if you have a corner in your house, and I have several corners in uh, our apartment, you know, where I have plants and little thingies that I, and I occasionally, I'm like, I want to see this like this. And, you know, I'll, I'll like, uh, move a thingy like a little, barely just like a degree because I think it's going to look better. So I think all of that, you know, what Ellen DeSanayake calls making special and what Dennis Sutton refers to as special focus, that's kind of what it's talking about. And it definitely, um, kind of bleeds into just daily life if you take that kind of wanting to apply that to the stuff in your household in your your daily life and I think you should just because it I don't know it's nice and it's interesting and it feels good and it makes your space prettier wherever you live all right so <clears throat> I'm gonna cut it off there thank you very much for watching and listening and reading if you're looking if you're reading subtitles because I've been adding subtitles you guys um Tell me what you think about this making special what you are probably applying it to something already in your life if so what let me know in the comments uh, other than that thank you very much for your time and I hope you have a fantastic day